I'm Phyllis Lindemood, and this is Pat Lindemood. We're going to give you an overview of the Lindemood Phoneme Sequencing Program, also known as the LIPS Program, and previously known as the AD Program. The goal of the Lindemood Program is independent reading for students. So let's begin with a bit of a look at reading. We believe the reading process, the gestalt of reading, is an integration of some visual processing, the ability to instantly recognize sight words, with language processing, the ability to use context to anticipate words and to have a good oral vocabulary, interacting with phonemic awareness, this particular auditory processing that is so critical to being able to decode words. And all of those are essential to enable someone to read rapidly enough and smoothly enough and accurately enough to comprehend the only reason to read. It's critical to address each of these circles in developing reading. The LIPS program will especially help you develop this one and integrate it with the others. The LIPS program is a series of overlapping steps to develop phonemic awareness and its application in reading, spelling, and speech. Phonemic awareness is the ability to think about and manipulate sounds within words. Individuals with good phonemic awareness can think about the wholeness of a word, and they can also think very precisely about the individual sounds within that word. That kind of sensory cognitive processing underlies accuracy and independence in reading, spelling, and speech. Research shows that it is the best single predictor of how easily students will learn to read and spell. The steps of the program go like this. First, students are helped to know what they will be doing and why. We call that setting the climate. Then, they're helped to discover how sounds feel, first for consonants and then for vowels. And that articulatory feedback is used to organize the sounds into categories so that precise comparisons can be made. Then that new tool, feeling, is used to track or sequence sounds within words and spell and read. Tracking, spelling, and reading are done at single syllable and multi-syllable levels. And the processing is applied to sight word development and reading and writing in context. Now here's a glimpse of each of those steps. You'll see younger and older students working one-to-one, -one, in small groups, and in classrooms. In each of those settings, notice the critical interaction of the teacher in questioning so students discover and process sensory information, and in responding to the response so students learn to self-correct. Remember, you'll be seeing just a glimpse of each step to give you the gestalt of the Lindemood program. We offer a series of training tapes to help you teach the steps, and additional practice for students is available on CD-ROM. First, watch a climate being set with a group of students beginning the LIPS program. In this case, high school students with reading difficulties. Do you guys have any idea why you're here? Why are you going to be working with me? No. Okay. My well, mom said make... I needed this book. But you don't know what, don't what know. this is? Well, what we're going to do is some really different things than you've done probably in any of your other classes at all. But it's all, the purpose of all of it is to try to get reading and spelling to be easier than they've been so far. Is that something that you're interested in? Would you like it if reading and spelling were easier for you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, the way we're going to do that is um, by helping you discover some new ways to think about the sounds in words. But we're going to not just think about how sounds um, sound. We're not just going to listen to sounds in here in this class. We're going to also um, look at the letters that go with them. So we're going to connect together the sounds and the, and the letters. And um, one other thing, and it's kind of the, the main thing we're going to do in here, and that's you're going to learn to feel how sounds are made in your mouth, 
Like, do your lips do it? Does your tongue? It means that you can connect together three kinds of thinking, three ways of thinking about words, and it gives you more ways to check yourself. Okay? So let's, let's just try some so you can see what I mean. Next, students discover how sounds feel. Sixteen of the consonants are organized into pairs, where both sounds are made with the same mouth action, but one is voiced and one is unvoiced. The articulatory features lead to descriptive labels, which will enable teacher and students to communicate very precisely about the sounds within words. Ready? So you're going to tell me what you feel when you say, First, see if you can feel if it's your lips or your tongue doing it. Try that first. And then raise your hand when you're ready to tell me. Lips or tongue? <coughs> Brittany. Think, she thinks it's her tongue. OK. Is it the tip of our tongue, like on our tip tapper? Or is it more the back of our tongue? Sean? I think it's the back. OK. That's pretty hard to see in there, isn't it? When I just say it the usual way, see if you can see my tongue. Even if I lean down, can you see my tongue? <coughs> when I just say it the regular way, or no? <coughs> Can't see it, can you? I'd have to open up real big. So since it's hard to see, let's show that with our hands. Let's make a gesture. What if this is the roof of our mouth, this hand, and here's our tongue in here? And you said that the tip wasn't working, the back was. So we have to get the back part of our hand up here, because we're pretending that's our tongue. And the back part of our hand, uh, the back part of our tongue, rather, can you feel it touch there? Does it just sort of move around or, or flap? Or what does it do? Does it actually touch, do you think? Yeah. You think it touches? Mm -hmm. OK. And like, um, touch in the yeah, front or the back? Empty. The back. OK. And does it stay touching for a long, long time, or does it just go? A really fast scrape. Well, show me with your hand what you feel. Do you see? Do you feel it stay touching, or does it go scrape like that? Yeah, it goes like that. Okay, now why don't you test on your partner's mouth? Decide who you're, who's going to be your partner. You two, and you two, and you two, like that. You might even have to do a three, maybe in the corner there. Look on somebody's mouth and let her say or him say both of them. Let her or him say both of them and see if they both tongue scrape. OK, there, I think you checked. Did they match? They did. They're both tongue scrapers. The consonants and their labels are not memorized. Problem-solving activities are used to bring associations between sounds, letters, labels, and mouth pictures to an automatic level. Sandra? Refresca labios. ¿Cómo se hace sonido? ¿Y qué letra es? F. F. Busca la F en el Do you think if I scrambled all of these together, you could just match them back up? Mm -hmm. yeah. And would you do it by, um, would you have to have memorized them all, or like taken notes down under the table, or would you be able to just check and feel? You can check and feel. Yeah, we're trying to work that way, so I hope you could. Let's do it and scramble. All right. Why don't you scramble the pictures, too? And we'll steal these out like cards, and you have to match up the one that you get. Let's spread out the pictures so that they're all um, visible. House. And what I want you to do is the one that you're going to use for your first turn, like Levi, if you go first, just pick whichever one you want to start with. You don't have to go with what's on top. Just pick the one you want. Say that and tell us what you feel. You have to say what you're feeling because otherwise we don't. We're bah, I feel bored. air gushing. I don't know. Okay, is it coming out between your teeth, between lips. your lips? So which picture shows that? Good for you. And we're going to always, on each of these, put the noisy one last and the quiet one first. 
So which one do you have here? Is that the noisy or the quiet sound? B Wait, the noisy? Is yeah. Vowel sounds are organized by how they are made as well. First, students discover how the tongue and jaw take little steps as vowel sounds are made. Starting with this one, let me do the rest of them, and you see which way my tongue goes. When I go e, i, e, a, a, a. It's going down. Okay. And did it go down like in great big steps or no, in little steps? No, real smaller ones. Okay. Can you show that with the felt? Little steps. That one. And go like there. Okay. We're probably going to have to uh, overlap them. Okay. Like maybe even about like that. There. Okay. And then that one. Mm -hmm. Here. There. Whoops. <coughs> Okay, now I'm going to do this one, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to say two more, and I want you to see which way my tongue and my jaw go on these. This one goes, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Well, you, you, keep, you take little steps and you keep going down. Keep going down, okay. Let's leave a space right here, because this mm -hmm. is going to be one group with its own label. And then put the next two steps down there showing how my tongue and my jaw went. <coughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And did it go, you said that it kept going down? Yeah. So a little bit lower? Yeah. Good. They're just going to barely fit. In fact, let's just move these up a little so it doesn't have to hang off quite so far. There. Yeah, that one might. Yeah. After discovering how the tongue and jaw work, students discover the positions of the lips as vowels are made. Smile, open, round, and sliding from one shape to another. When we did these, when we went O, U, U, what shape are my lips doing? Well, they're in a circle. Okay, and is a circle round or square? Round. So let's call this group of sounds the round sounds, because they mm -hmm. made our mouths go round. When I did these, how would you describe the shape my mouth is when I go ah, ah? It's really what? It's um, open. Mm -hmm really open. So between our pictures that are left, that one the most definitely. Open. Okay, I want to put that one up there by the, the open sounds. Next, in each of the four vowel categories, students work out the order of sounds by comparing tongue and jaw position. Okay, so we know these go like this. Okay. Pick another one, Jake. Okay, he's picking e, eh, and we're going to check to see if e eh steps down or up. Our new one, does it step down or up compared to E? So let's see. E, E. Check it on you. E, E. 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 Does it step down or up? Down. down. Okay, so we'll move it down. And we don't know if it goes clear down past this one, this one, uh, uh -huh. so let's check those two and see where it is to that. See if it steps down or up from this one. Uh, E. Uh. uh. Eh. Eh. Up. Okay, so it's down from that one, up from this one. It must be in between them. So they must be like that. You agree? Yeah. yeah. Let's just check the three and see if they're right so far. Feel it on here. Go e e uh. e e e uh. e uh. Yeah. Yeah. Feels right? Okay. Pick a new one, Tony. Okay, let me say all of them the way we have them. And if it looks like each one steps down and nothing is out of place, nothing steps up, we know they can go right on to the, um, the felts here. I'll say just what we have, and you watch here on me. In fact, I think I'll do them sideways, just like our picture. This is a side view picture. Let me turn sideways. The way we have them, they go e, i, e, a, a, a. Yep. Do we have them right? Yeah. Put them on there. Like the consonants, vowels are practiced through problem-solving sensory activities. Thank you. Will you tell us those sounds and point to each one and say its sound for us? Mm -hmm. Can yeah. you turn around just a little bit? E, I, I, A, A, A. Very good. Thank you, Shauna. I'm going to do five of them in a row, and you have to tell me if I, my mouth is making a smile, an open, 
or around? Okay, raise your hand if you think you know for this one. A. What am I doing on that one? Lose? Okay. Okay, that's one. Now that students know how sounds feel and have compared and labeled them, they learn to feel them within words. To represent the sequence of sounds in a very concrete way, we first use the mouth pictures. Ready? Ah. Ah. What feeling is that? Open. Okay, get that open down there. And I'm going to add one of these consonants to it, but I'm not going to tell you which one. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to tell you if it comes before the open or after. You're going to have to feel to check that. You ready? Okay. Okay, make it change from ah to ah. Ah, ah. Good. What did you feel come in there? Tongue row. All right, so you're in your tongue row. Okay, and where do you feel it? Ah. Uh. You're showing me at last. Is that where you feel it? Okay, here's how you check. You take your finger and you point to each one, but you uh. say it really slowly while you feel it. Ah. Uh. Got it right? I agree. To build students' ability to hold and compare words, we next use colored blocks to track sounds. The teacher asks students to check what they feel, and the labels we've established enable teacher and students to communicate clearly about that. If that was frecked, show me frest. Frest. Er. Mm -hmm. Take your fingers like we've been doing and go through them. First one was frecked. Er. And now you want frest. 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 Okay. All right, now I want you to write some letters on there and give me the letters. F. F. Backlifter. And you don't have to tell me the labels this time, just the letters that you okay. would imagine. Okay, R, mm -hmm. A, and the E. Mm -hmm. If that's frest, I want you to show me friend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. skinny and put in your mm -hmm. If that says ip, Brianna, Make it change to or the real word if. Um, I'm taking out the lip, um, lip popper mm -hmm. and putting in the um. What was that thing again? If, like, if I'm hungry, I need to eat. If um, I'm putting in the lip. Cooler. Lip cooler, good for you. Okay, if that says if, Timmy, change it to miff. I'm glad you're all thinking and waiting for Timmy to do his thinking. I'm putting the no sound. Timmy says he's putting a nose sound first. Mm -hmm. And he says that smile ear and that lip cooler still stayed there while mm -hmm. it's saying miff. Miff. Do you all think mm -hmm. he's yes. thinking yes. right on yes. that? Okay. Yes. 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 When students are accurately tracking two to three sounds in words, they're overlapped into spelling and reading words of that size. As a half step, students manipulate one sound at a time by manipulating letter tiles before they work on paper. Okay, that one says teeth. And we're going to change one thing. Might be a real word, might be a nonsense word. You show me. Change it to, how about seeth? Teeth, see. Uh huh. It's like you're taking the tip tapper out. He was an extra. Oops, that's 
C, because there's no E right there. Okay, so that one says C. C. How about C? Can you change it C, so it says C? C, C. I'm taking out the tongue tops. No, lip coolers. It's a cooler. Is it cooling your lip off when you say that? Tongue cooler. Yeah. If this says if, show me if. Kevin. Okay, he took out the P that made the lip popper sound and put in an F for what sound is at the end of if. Mm -hmm. We've done something. We came from app and if to if. This word is real, isn't it? Was app real? Was if real? How come do you think we spend some time doing nonsense words and sometimes doing real words? Just to get the hang of it. To get the hang of it. And when we're doing nonsense words, you can't remember how they look. You have to lean on how they feel. And how they feel. Mm -hmm. And how about this one? Use your finger as you go, okay? Put your finger under there and slide it along like this so you can make sure you match. Thief. Thief. And one more. Thief. Reef. Uh huh. Reef. Like a reef on your door? Close. That one is a wreath on your door. What kind of a cooler is on that? Reef. Tongue or lip? Tongue. Mm -hmm. Read that one. Lip. 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 Good. Now, this one is going to be for Adriana. Can you stand? Lips. When you say lips, what do you feel last? Skinny. Skinny. And what, so what letter would you expect to be last? S. Mm -hmm. Is that what your eye shows? Do you want to change your mind? Lisp. Right. Good. Lisp. It's when you, your speech is not really clear. But now, what does it say, Maya Delgado? Stand for you. Lips. Lips. Good. Several important spelling rules, we call them expectancies, are introduced at this level, like how vowels are signaled to say their names, how the letter C works, and so on. These orthographic expectancies, integrated with articulatory feedback, let students begin to become independent with reading and spelling. Smoust. Smoust. That's just great. Gur. Gur. And. Gan, gran, gur, gur, ain, grain. Good. As phonetic processing emerges for students, the LIPS program also addresses the acquisition of sight words. Sight words are crucial for fluency, and fluency is crucial for comprehension, our main goal. In order to read in context, even at beginning levels, students need to be able to attack multisyllable words. That's an issue in spelling as well as reading, since students entering school typically have many multisyllable words in their vocabularies and will be wanting to include those in their writing. Like our single syllable steps, multisyllable processing is introduced at the oral level. We use colored squares to track the number and sequence of syllables within multisyllable words much like we used colored blocks to track sounds. Okay. Change it from helpful to hateful. And hopeful. There you go. Just You're going to do just like we did back on our blocks where you said the old one, uh -huh. and you touched as you went, and then the new one. Remember that step? Do the same thing here. Do the old word, helpful, oh. and now do the new word, hateful. 
change this one. Yep, and it went from help to, what's a new chunk in there? Hate. Right. How about hateful. from hateful to hatefully? Hatefully? Mm-hmm. Hatefully. Hatefully. Let's see if you can touch them as you go. So it's hateful, hateful to... Hate. Hmm. Okay, so we need three. Students also learn to judge which syllable is the accented one and to track the sounds within that syllable. So we're going to put blocks on the accented one and everywhere else just felts. And now we can show a whole chunk changing, a whole syllable mm -hmm. changing, or we can show one little sound inside the syllable changing. Like, that's contraction, show me confraction. Contraction, confraction, the accent stays the same as so. well. So contract a frack? Yeah, basically. that's uh, what you just did is just what I want you to do, the chunk to the chunk, track to frack, and then which block changes. No, so this is, wait, which one is this? Track, to or ack, to f or ack. Uh -huh. So a uh, tip tapper to a lip cooler. Okay. How about confraction to confractly? Confraction, confractly. I don't think the accent changes. And you know what? I won't ever change it. Once we get the blocks on there, it'll, they'll, that's where it'll stay. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you change shun to... Lee. Good. Students overlap into spelling and reading multi-syllable words by manipulating syllable cards. Spell lotion. Take your hand and show me how many beats in lotion. Lotion. Good. Okay, you guys tell me thumbs up or thumbs down. I don't think that's a thumb up or a thumb down. There you go. Ready? Next person. Uh, make it say caption. Who can do that one? Willie, can you do that one? Good. You got it? Caption. Caption. Who can make it say pre-caption? How many beats? Good for you. Go ahead. Here's your beginnings, and here's your middle part, and here's your endings. So what do you have to add to this to make it say pre-caption? Oh, that was good. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Yes. The syllable card step is a short and easy one for most students, and lays a base for teaching where to break words into syllables as students read and spell. The lip steps for breaking words into syllables are very simple, keeping us headed for rapid phonetic processing and fluency. On the next one, go ahead and, and divide it up, but working in your steps, mm -hmm. and why don't you say your thinking out loud so I know, know what you're doing. Okay. So, E is a vowel, I is a vowel, and this I is a vowel, and that O. Okay. So, I agree, eyes of owl, nose of owl. Mm -hmm. Would they usually, if they're right next to each other, would they usually work together or separately? Together, usually. Okay, so they get... One big dot. One dot between them, that's right. Because they'll probably make one sound. Okay. So how many syllables do we estimate this is? Three. Yep, we think it's probably three. Mm -hmm. And then ending, I know shun's an ending. Okay. So that's automatically a syllable. Uh-huh. And any beginnings that we have worked mm -hmm. with? No. We haven't done this one. Yes. R E. I can't see uh, what I'm doing. Re. Yeah. Don't we have that on the card? Yes. So that would break there. And then do we need to even go on to step three? No. Okay. And then so it's restriction. Can you say a little faster? Restriction. Yeah. Good for you. Reversing the divide and read process. Students learn to say each syllable as they write it in multisyllable spelling. When students have some function in phonetic processing, sight words, oral vocabulary, and comprehension, they are ready to read in context. The teacher questions so students learn to use all four circles to detect and correct reading errors. In ancient Egypt, the cat was regarded as scared. Okay, now, let me check. That would make sense. But when you said scared, 
What did you feel right after the skinny sound? The k, k sound. Mm -hmm. the scraper. Mm -hmm. Let's see if you have a scraper. Does you see a scraper right there? No. I don't. Okay. Let's see if we can figure that word out. Say crit. Ah. All right. So that is going to change the idea of the sentence. Yeah. So, so run through that once more with the whole sentence. In ancient Egypt, the cat was regarded as sacred. The saguaro cattle of the American Southwest can reach a height of 60 feet. Okay, now I want to check that sentence. What's the idea that you've got for those? Really no. big cattle? Yeah, I was going to say really big cattle, 60 feet. Let's see, let's check the words, see. If it seems really odd, you want to go back and investigate. Mm -hmm. So let's let's check and see that. It's a grow cat cactus. Ah. There's no t cattle. Yeah. It's not it's not cattle. Then it's cactus. Oh, now a sixty foot cactus is quite a bit different than yeah. a sixty foot bunch of cows, huh? And at this application level of the program, students also begin writing sentences and paragraphs learning to prove the language, meaning, and spelling of a passage. In closing, here are a few individuals talking about their experiences with the Linda Mood program. Use it well and have fun. Right? <laughs> uh, my little, you know, the usual, we got little kids. I got a little girl that's six and a little boy that's five. And, uh -huh. you know, they want bedtime stories or stuff like that. Well, Dad could never read. So once in a while, I would try and fake my way through it, you know, and I'd make up a story. Well, they'd tell me that's not the story, so they knew what was going on. So now, now I can sit down with them. And actually, I have a little girl. She, like say, she's six. She's in the first grade. She's learning this in school. So it's like the new math. Now I can sit down with her, and the two of us can discuss reading and how to read and, and what goes on with reading so we've changed the whole outlook on what we're doing from dad not knowing how to read to dad helping me with reading so it's it's brought on a whole new perspective there in the past i thought i really did a good job of teaching phonics and yet there were many children that just didn't seem to catch on they could tell me the sounds of all of the consonants but they just couldn't seem to be able to read words or write words and they just didn't progress very well. Then when I was introduced to this program I found that there was that extra dimension of feeling it and I, so this year I have spent much time helping the children not only see the letters, hear the sounds, but knowing how they are made and how to, to feel them so that they can check themselves and it has changed my whole teaching procedure and I don't think I can ever go back to doing anything less than this. This teacher's first grade class far outscored a control group in a study on preventing reading disorders. She wove the LIPS program into her traditional reading instruction while the control class received that reading program without LIPS. By the end of the year, the no lips class scored like this. 49 points out of 100 on a phonemic awareness test, 2.5 grade level in spelling, 2.8 grade level in reading words, and 2.4 grade level in reading unfamiliar words. The lips class did better on all four measures. 85 out of 100 in phonemic awareness, 3.6 grade level in spelling, 5.1 grade level in reading words, and 6.8 grade level in reading unfamiliar words. And when these LIP students reached fifth grade, they were still scoring 13 to 43 percentile points above the district mean on the written language subtests of the Stanford Achievement Test. As a, uh, a resource teacher at the lower elementary level, I work with students in reading more than any other subject and the terminology that you learn and use with the Linda Mood Bell techniques lets you um, establish a basic language that both you and the student now are talking. You're talking the same language and that's so valuable. I think one thing we at Snowshoe decided was not to take out what we did well. 
We, we, we didn't stop what we were doing and just put Linda Mood Bell in. We decided to keep what we thought we do, what we know we do well, and use Linda Mood Bell in addition with that. It, we did, with this first grade class, provide 30 minutes a day initially um, for the Linda Mood Bell instruction so that we could get the techniques in place um, and later be able to use them. And now they are just woven throughout our academic subjects. For instance, in reading, we constantly refer to it. As I introduce new words or talk about words, we also refer to them in the Linda Mood Bell techniques, if they play fair or don't play fair, what you feel with each of those words. It's talked about in our spelling class all the time. It's used with our writing program so that the children um, are asked, what do you feel when you want to spell or write that word? Um, <clears throat> I can honestly say that Linda Mood Bell techniques are the missing elements uh, for me that I would, you know, will use really for the rest of my teaching career. Um, these techniques I have found to be so valuable with the students that um, I will always use them. Personally, after teaching second grade for a number of years, I'm really um, not only proud, but really kind of um, surprised at, at what I'm getting mm -hmm. from these kids, especially in the writing. Um, I guess with the reading, I'm kind of used to it now, and, and now that's become my expectations. So using the program, um, I expect all my kids to read. Mm -hmm. I expect all of them to be able to do second grade work. But I'm finding now that I'm getting um, a lot of above grade level work. Well, I found even with ELP kids, that um, my scores have just soared between my pre and post testing. I have a lot, um, lot bigger ranges usually with my low kids because they make a lot more gains. But my average and above average kids also make great gains, and most of them are reading way above grade level. Before it was, I was so frustrated that I didn't know what to do, and I thought I was just dumb and stupid, and I was just a kid that couldn't learn. And now I know that I can learn and that really I am pretty smart. Mm -hmm.